Welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, please. And let's get right into this story. This one right here is about Andrew Hamilton, who is described in Jamaica's news media as a drug kingpin and his $1 billion portfolio. Billion with a B. I didn't say million with a M. I said billion with a B. This man is in big dog status as far as money concerns and properties, wealth, but they are after his assets. And the goal is to confiscate a billion dollars worth of his assets. Lo and behold, today, which is November 27th, 2023, the news headline in Jamaica Gleaner says, one billion dollars takedown meaning they have now become successful at confiscating everything that this man has amassed did i mention that he was once a police officer and a postal worker but the u.s is also involved so here goes the story from back to front front to back let's take it back from when this all started say about 2013 and i'm gonna bring you up to speed to 2023 the first one says as the half a billion dollar empire of convicted jamaican drug kingpin andrew hamilton continues to crumble the financial investigations division or fid revealed that it had identified several properties that it will seek to have forfeited to the state in other words, taken away and turned over to the government. The head of the FID at the time, Justin Felis, told the Jamaica Gleaner back then that the properties, both residential units and open lots, are valued at large amounts of money. Detectives from the FID swooped down on the central sorting office on South Camp Road in Kingston and seized a late model Mercedes-Benz motor vehicle believed to be among Mr. Hamilton's assets. Felice explained that the car was among 19 assets restrained by the court, but said that the FID was having difficulties locating this particular piece of asset, the brand new Mercedes-Benz. We have been looking for that car for some time now, he told <laughs> the Jamaica Gleaner. Now, full disclosure, court appearances. The disclosure by Felice came hours after Kingston-based attorney Don Satterwait and two other accused linked to Mr. Hamilton appeared in the corporate area resident magistrate's court on Monday on laundering charges. Even his attorney was arrested. The other accused are 53-year-old insurance contractor Paulette Higgins of the Norman Gardens, Kingston, and 50-year-old postal employee Janet Ramsey of Portmore, St. Catherine. A fourth accused in the case, Anne-Marie Cleary, did not appear in court because she had been admitted to the Manchester Hospital. Now, during the brief hearing, Prosecutors charged that between 1998 and 2009, Mr. Hamilton, who had pleaded guilty to drug, money, laundering, and firearm-related charges in the United States of America, not in Jamaica. So he got caught up in the U.S. He was known in the U.S. for being one of those guys that get to the money. Heavy, big heavy hitters, right? So drugs, money laundering, firearm-related charges is what he pled guilty to in the United States of America, not in Jamaica. And also said to have acquired 30 pieces of property valued at $500 million. Now, as a result of his conviction, prosecutors say that the United States Drug Enforcement Agency, or the DEA, reached out to Jamaican's authorities and, sev and said, listen, we are requesting a civil investigation into this man's assets in Jamaica because he sure was making a whole lot of money here 
and we've tracked the money and the money was all coming to Jamaica. So what was he doing with this money while he was on the island? Now, you got to understand, big wigs, invested people started pulling away from him. Big wig, wigs on the island were probably saying, listen, we don't want America meddling in our business. It might expose others. So what they did, this triggered a massive money laundering investigation, which, according to prosecutors, began way back in December of 2012 at the request of the United States of America DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency. And it resulted in a Supreme Court judge issuing an order in September that year barring Hamilton and his relatives and his friends from disposing of their assets. Investigators believed that they registered for him. So they couldn't, the, the family members couldn't get rid of the assets, friends couldn't get rid of their assets, and he for sure himself could not get rid of his assets. In other words, he had assets that were probably in other people's names, friends and family members' names, but he was the owner of them, and that is what the law believed at the time. So they just stopped everybody from doing any kind of business with any of their properties while the investigation kicked off. Before the restraint order was issued, prosecutors say 11 properties that were linked to him, they refer to as the drug kingpin, were valued at $324 million. Those were transferred. Further prosecutors alleged that Satterswaite, who is the attorney, was the person also responsible for maintaining the properties and collecting rent. In granting, in granting bail, senior resident magistrate Judith Pusey called the allegations very serious. It's not a simple issue. The allegations speak about large sums of money. However, attorney at law Ian Wilkinson, who represents Satterswait, this is an attorney, Ian Wilkinson, representing another attorney who is in trouble, Satterswait, cautioned that these are just figures being bandied about these people are innocent until they are proven guilty he emphasized satterswaite higgins and ramsey were each granted bail in the sum of 10 million dollars and they were ordered at the time to surrender their travel documents and to report to the major organized crime and anti-corruption task force head office every monday a stop order was also placed on them at all the ports in Jamaica. In other words, they can't leave, period. And if anyone sees them trying to leave, they are supposed to apprehend them and call law enforcement. And at the time, they were scheduled to return back to court and the struggle continued. Now, I remember covering this a few years ago. Fast forward to today, right? Let me get you up to speed some more. So here we are in 2022. This is before we hit 2023. This is the next step. In 2022, what happened was this same person who was described as a drug kingpin, he was fighting to keep all his assets. So he had some paperwork done and he was supposed to take it to a higher court and try to get the law to be on his side so he can keep his assets so let's go off this one jamaica's second highest court had turned away a last grasp attempt by a convicted drug boss to hold on to his portfolio of assets that were at this time worth over 500 million dollars the court of appeal on friday refused an application by lawyers for andrew hamilton to leave for leave to challenge a forfeiture order that was made by the Supreme Court on July 8th that handed possession of his assets over to the government. Wow. An application for the forfeiture ordered to be placed on hold was also refused, according to the ruling by a panel of three judges. The order stripped Mr. Hamilton stripped his associates and members of his family including his elderly mother of 14 multi-million dollar homes 
not a house worth 14 million, 14 homes that were all multi-million dollar homes. Four motor vehicles, four bulldozers, a fishing vessel that was purchased for $19 million and a bank account that contained $19 million. Now, some of the assets have already been transferred to the state. It is the largest forfeiture order that was obtained by the Financial Investigations Division, FID, which is the agency that enforces Jamaica's Proceeds of Crime Act, or POCA, POCA. The legislation crafted to deprive criminals of their ill-gotten gains. So in other words, Jamaica has POCA, and POCA are the people who come after you, and they say, where do you get this boat from? How come you have a yacht? How come you have these big Mercedes-Benz BMWs, all brand new and build up this big old tree story house and all this um we have suspicion that you might be dealing drugs or this money comes from somewhere that is ill-gotten and then they dig into your finances whether it's by the request of the united states of america because you might have made your money over there as a big drug dealer and then came back to jamaica thinking you're going to retire in peace and safety and then the u.s arm of the law contacts jamaica and say hey he was here, he was convicted here as a drug dealer. He did a few years in prison here, and then he went back to Jamaica or got sent back to Jamaica. We need you guys to look into his assets there and see what he has, because we know for sure that he made a lot of money here, and we also tracked the money and found out that the money left the U.S. and came to Jamaica. By these requests, they're going to start digging. And if they find anything, their goal is to take it away from you. In other words, these laws, the legislation was crafted to deprive criminals of their ill-gotten gains. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm Jamaican. Me know, me know I'm not say. There are a lot of people in Jamaica right now. Big upper, bigger, bigger heads we call them, right? If you listen to uh, that reggae song, me not no more beg, no more pardon. Enough drugs, money, they are cherry garden. Who sing that? Right. All right. So anyways, let's move on with this. So the homes included a penthouse suite and two apartments in a gated Norbrook Ritz complex located in the upper class neighborhoods of Norbrook, St. Andrew. Six apartments in the gated Monte Carlo Isles complex, also in St. Andrew, and a mansion in Ironshore, St. James, all confiscated. A review of court records showed that five of the Monte Carlo Isles apartments and lots for two of the Norbrook units were acquired over a seven-day period ending on June 25th of 2008, for a total of $61 million, which is about $300,000 US dollars. The others were acquired two days apart in March that same year. So in other words, there's a large sum of money here that was being used to purchase a whole lot of things that were worth lots and lots of money. So no red flags were going up. Nobody was digging into his background, his financials. It's not like in the United States of America, if you're going to just purchase property, they're going to dig into your financials. They want to know where this money is coming from. They want to see your bank account, so on and so forth. Apparently, in Jamaica, you just throw the money out if you have the money and you end up owning the things. Well, that's until the U.S. steps in and says, hey, we are requiring an inquiry into this man's assets or we're requesting an inquiry into this man's assets now you know if the u.s dea drug enforcement agency requests from the law in jamaica to do that they're going to do it because they don't want any bad blood among them the others were acquired two days apart that year calls to ian wilkinson the attorney who represented hamilton and some of his relatives went unanswered at this time. But, according to a court transcript of the appeal hearing, Wilkinson argued 
that the judge who granted the forfeiture order had failed to properly consider the fact that some of the properties were not recoverable because they were required before May 30th, 2007, and therefore they would not be affected by POCA. POCA was formed. The POCA is the Govern Forfeiture Orders took effect on May 30th of 2007. And the attorney was saying, some of these properties, y'all can't take them, man. It's not right because these laws were formed after these properties were purchased not before so take what you want to take that was purchased after the law but not before it's kind of like somebody going to prison and two years ago you got hit with a gun charge and they sentenced you to four years in prison two years into your service um trying to get your time done in prison you're serving your time a new gun law comes out and says it's 20 years in prison for an illegal firearm now somebody goes back and changes your sentence and now they have you doing 20 years instead of the two years that you were already tried and convicted for that's kind of the principle that the lawyer was trying to apply right here either way the jamaican government shot it down both arguments were however dismissed by the panel of three judges who noted that no such party is before the court and invoked section 55 subsection 3 of polka for the purpose of deciding whether or not property was recoverable at any time including any time before the appointed day it shall be deemed that this part dealing with the civil recovery of property was in force at that and any other relevant time in other words, they can use it to go back and take stuff, move forward and take stuff, and just assume that it was treated as if this was in effect when those properties were purchased. None of the other proposed grounds of appeal raises any real prospect of success. Accordingly, the application for leave to appeal must be refused. Put it like this. They had already made up their mind that they were going to confiscate everything that this man owns. The U.S. had requested them to do their due diligence and they didn't want to end up looking like fools. The last thing they needed was for U.S. entities to come into Jamaica and discover or uncover anything. It would make them look like they were doing a cover-up and they were complicit to a huge drug dealer who had amassed a huge amount of wealth from the U.S. and had somehow been able to traffic all that money back to Jamaica and invested it into the island. Hamilton, who is a former Jamaican cop and a postal worker who is believed to have amassed a $1 billion portfolio, asset portfolio, comprising of more than two dozen luxury homes and cars. He pleaded guilty in 2012 to money laundering and conspiracy to deal in marijuana in California in the United States. He was sentenced in February 2014 to four years in prison back then. Now following his conviction, U.S. authorities requested that the Jamaican authorities conduct a civil investigation into Hamilton's assets. And that's when they discovered his staggering wealth. Hamilton and members of his family, like I told you before, were now under siege. They were arrested by the Jamaican police December of 2016 on money laundering charges along with attorney Don Satterswaite, who is accused of fronting the real estate purchases. Now, a couple of things were said. Following the conviction, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency requested that Jamaican authorities conduct a civil investigation into Hamilton's assets here on the island, and that's when the Jamaican authorities discovered the drug dealer's staggering wealth. Somebody said, what's the FID? But I will bet my last dollar 
that other big neck influentials knew and maybe were stakeholders in the operation. If the USA does not step in, we in Jamaica have no justice. Not true, did us? Another person says, so true. I can tell you how much I pray for some extradition request for some of these untouchables in Jamaica. Since we can't prosecute them, let somewhere else that has a track record do it. Another person says, just show me your tax papers and receipts, bossy. Make sure you have all of that. Another person says, Radam. Another one said, that is the weapon you must use, Jamaican government. Confiscate every dollar they amass. Police and postal worker, sure. And another person says, Jamaica police and investigative arms, them never learn anything from these FBI courses, huh? The number one rule is follow the money. All right. Now, with that being said, we move forward to what today's headline is. And today's headline in 2023 comes up saying $1 billion takedown. Now, $1 billion takedown simply means that they have now been successful and the headline in the Gleaner says, Law enforcement has finally toppled, or law enforcement topples vast empire of cop turned drug dealer. It took investigators 15 years to unravel his complicated scheme. And this was printed November 26th of 2023. Wow. So, with that said, I guess. They have finally become successful at taking away everything. They had $500 million worth of his stuff before. And they discovered $500 million worth more. And they were going after the $500 million worth more, which he was fighting to keep, which was rejected. And now it's final. All his assets have been turned over. So the update is this. Hamilton's entire asset portfolio is now under the control of the FID and it will be disposed of through competitive biddings the agency's principal director Keith Darian disclosed to the Sunday Gleaner Friday who in their right mind would buy a forfeited asset that once belonged to a cop who turned drug dealer who will be back on the streets in less than five years. Well, I don't know. But just the fact that he no longer has any of that and it has been turned over to the government and the government now owns a billion dollars worth of his assets, you could pretty much say all that work for nothing. Wow. Another person says, LOL, L-O-O-O-L, laugh out loud. So a man who was a cop and a postal worker who has no legitimate business at all, all of a sudden is able to generate billions of Jamaican dollars annually and is able to purchase multiple high value properties in a small island nation and buy expensive cars and bulldozers. And yet there are no inquiries and curious minds in Jamaica's politics or law enforcement wanting to know the origins of his wealth and his empire. Color me cynical, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency had to shame our authorities into going after his ill-gotten gains. Was this incompetence or complicity? Wow. Mr. DEA, can you please continue to embarrass us into doing the right things? Congratulations to the local agencies involved in this takedown. However, belated that may be. This should make all those laundering dirty money scared. It's a tiny country. Somebody knows who the people who suddenly pull big mansions out of thin air and they don't have no job or they didn't win the lottery. Another person said, 
I wonder what sort of custody are these confiscated assets maintained to prevent unauthorized persons from transferring them into their own names or selling for financial gains. I also want to know what kind of audits are performed on these assets to control the, govern the movement in and out of this accounting sector. It appears that there's a lot of money here that we don't know about that needs attention. And I sincerely hope that an experienced journalist who knows about maintaining proper controls to prevent fraudulent activities will delve into this matter. When they take away properties from poor people, they are demolished in the public view. And when these mansions and other high value assets are taken, they are held in secrecy. Why is that? Another person said, I didn't read anything too, too complex there. Drug dealer get busted in California, USA. DEA decides to look into his dealings in Jamaica, realizes that he has multiple real estate holdings and other properties, investigates and find out that many of the real estate holdings are in other people's names. Some, if which are made up, isn't that standard criminal MO? And another person in the last comment said, it seems like Mr. Hamilton is a greedy, greedy dude. He should have quit halfway through the good going. In other words, you quit while the going is good. But we all know that in a world where money comes a lot, you say you're going to quit. All right, this one last run and then I'm getting out of this. But if you fall in love with the money, you will never quit because like Bob Marley said, money is digits. Digits go infinite. They have no end, right? So therefore you will never find happiness because you will never find that number that's good enough for you to say, okay, I've had enough. Let's move on. At the end of the day, um, the person who said that all this stuff should be made public for us to see and the public to be able to monitor i agree so they've taken away these multiple properties from this person right and they are now held in secrecy who is to say that some of these same agents won't transfer some of these properties over into their own names who is to say that some of these agents won't be selling some of these properties for their own personal gain who controls that portfolio now and who is going to be monitoring it in years to come hmm at the end of the day i knew from the first time i covered this story that mr hamilton was going to lose all of his properties for the simple fact that the u.s stepped in it's kind of like you know when picnic bad but when time them parents come around them sit down and act like them good yes so in Jamaica, Jamaica was going on bad. The authorities in Jamaica didn't care where Mr. Hamilton got his money from. And a lot of them were probably calling him, you know, say, the big man that big him up, you know, yeah, man, I'm a bridge in Mr. Hamilton or Ham Ham or whatever the hell they wanted to call him until the U.S. authorities stepped in. Now, once the U.S. authorities stepped in, everybody started acting like they're holier than thou art and I wasn't doing anything wrong. So let's go look into this and see what they are saying. And it was like, yo, we have to give you up, bro, because they have their eyes on us now and we can't make the whole we look bad there are others here who are doing the same thing and if we don't give you up others here will end up losing their things too so he was the sacrificial lamb and the scapegoat it took them 15 years to take away all his stuff and they were persistent at doing it one billion dollars down the drain leave your comments in the comment section below tell me what you think about this one I'll catch you on the next video. Big up to my people, my audience, especially my audience who does morning thoughts because every morning we say shout out to the people going out to work. Shout out to the people coming in from work. Extra special shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. You know why? Because granny say every mickle make a muckle. 
take your time and build your house one one block at a time you're gonna be proud when you're done by the sweat of your brow you have eaten your bread you don't have to look over your shoulder you don't own 14 15 properties and 20 new cars and no bmws and benzes but the little that you have you work hard for it and guess what you can prove that you work hard for it and nobody can take it away from you with that said i leave this video right here it's a lesson all in all leave your comments in the comment section below and i'll catch you on the next video it's soflow tv i'm out peace